Hello and welcome to the very first adventure of Dungeons and Disabled. I am your DM, Steve Saylor, and I have my intrepid disabled adventurers with me, Morgan Baker, Mike the Quad, Grant Stoner, Hello It's Colo, and Siam. Hi, disabled adventurers. How are you? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, sorry to break it to you, Grant. Uh, what but yeah. <laughs> well, wait to find out. Oh. <laughs> We've come we, together we, we today. We brought y'all here. To uh, this is an intervention. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> what if this was how people found out? Oh. <laughs> I'd hey, be can so you join devastated. This Google Meet, please. We have something yeah. very important to tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That exactly. you don't know about yourself. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to do some uh, watch, uh, quick introductions. Morgan, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, and who you are on the internet? Hey, my name is Morgan Baker, pronouns she, they, and I am deaf and I work as a game developer where I make video games, uh, electronic arts, and I love fantasy. I love board games and I'm super excited to be here today. Sweet. Thank you so much. Mike, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, your pronouns and uh, where you, uh, what you do on the internet? Hi, what's up? My name is Mike. I go by Mike the Quad. Um, I use he, him pronouns, and um, I stream on Twitch and do a little bit of a digital accessibility consulting on the side. Love it. Grant, pronouns and what you do on the internet, sir? Yeah, hi, I'm Grant. Uh, pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm a journalist. I write about accessibility and the disabled perspective in games, and I'm pretty sure I've interviewed all of you at Camp Sam. So hi. We'll have to we'll have to change that now, and uh, so make sure that uh, you know everything. Everything right now is on the record. It is. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> everything you say. Yeah. Humana, humana, humana. <laughs> uh, all right, perfect. Uh, Colo, uh, I want you to introduce yourself and pronouns and uh, who, who you, what you do on the internet. Uh, hi, I'm Colo. I use she/her pronouns. Um, I uh, make content about games um, and I love a chat. Uh, I mostly Twitch stream. Uh, come say hi. That'd be snazzy. You can find me on the internet under the name Hello It's Colo. Um, I play lots of games. I love an adventure. I really love board games. I've played tabletop games before, but I've never played like actual D and D. So I've wanted to for ages. And then Steve sent me this DM, and I was like, Ah, oh, yes, let's go. <laughs> so I'm like super excited. Um, love it. Hi. Love it. Perfect, thank you. And uh, last but certainly not least, Sam. I'm Sam. I am also uh, basically a streamer um, on Twitch, but I also work for the nonprofit Wounded Warrior Project, where we work with a lot of our disabled and wounded veterans and family members as well to give them the help that they deserve. Perfect. Okay. Are we ready to jump into the adventure, uh, y'all? Yes. Okay, Ready. Uh, so let us jump right in to our first adventure of Dungeons and Disableds. <sighs> Many stories have been told and retold in this land. Most tell of heroic deeds saving the world from apocalyptic destruction, some rewriting an evil deed, some even saving a small town from some kobolds. We've all seen a hero or two in our lifetime. Y'all seem larger than life, right? Like they were born to be heroes. Looking at them, they all look like the paragon of adventure. Like they can overcome obstacles. They inspire all who know their great deeds. But what about our stories? The disabled ones. The ones who everyone takes pity on for how brave we are just to get out of bed each morning. Disowned from families, living alone or with a care just to keep us alive for another day. We adapt every day to just live as independently as possible. There are no curb cuts along the cobblestone streets in this world and no braille on town signs. We are the disabled and boy, do we have many stories to tell. Like this one. Welcome to Dungeons and Disableds. And like many tales before, it all starts in a tavern. Well, sort of. It's cold. A bitter breeze jolts you awake, like suddenly waking from a deep thought or a day's slumber. Goosebumps suddenly appear on your arms as your body shivers for a second. But why is it cold? Did you leave the window open? It's not winter. Instinctively, you pull your robe closer to you, 
and the sensation of the fabric is wrong. It's itchy, and it has an odor you don't recognize. Also, sewn into the fabric is a number on a patch that looks like it was sewn haphazardly. You then take in your surroundings as you look around. This is not where you last remember being. You're sitting at a rough wooden table. Your eyes adjust to the dim light from the only light source in the room, which is from a fireplace on the far side of where you're sitting. Several tables half filled with as folks minding their own business or at least looking like they don't want to be disturbed are sitting and eating from similar looking bowls and trays. There is a bar of sorts as a lineup of creatures, big and small, but all wearing the same gray tunic line up in front with similar looking trays getting food placed on them from a stout dwarf woman behind the counter. Once they've gathered their food, they find an empty spot at a table and start eating in silence. Only then does the fog of your memory come into focus, or at least the memories you can remember. You don't recognize this place at all. This is not where you last remember being. Adrenaline starts to burn inside you as you try to remember what you can. The trilling of a flute floats in the room as rhythmic, rhythmic drumming accompanies the sweet melody. The sound tries to penetrate the room, but instead of rising above the din of different conversation, volumes, it, it becomes part of the background, like a sweet smell of incense that is noticeable when noticed, but after several minutes, the scent becomes part of the background. Some patrons are drinking, gambling, or eating together while, uh, while a tall purple-skinned furbog is behind a bar pouring many pints of ale or sipping something from under the counter to those who want to elevate their tastes and a kick to the senses that ale can't provide. Sitting on the makeshift, makeshift stage lit by a candle as the flute is reaching the crescendo of its song, sits a tiefling in a metal wheelchair with two actuating arms connecting to its frame. One has a small snare drum attached and a single drumstick keeps the rhythm as he plays. And the other arm holds a pan flute close to the tiefling's mouth as he shifts his head back and forth along each pipe as he plays. Grant, why don't you describe who is playing on the stage? Uh, this is the famous bard, Odeon Sonnen, who is a traveling uh, musician who goes to different taverns and uh, luxury parties, uh, all for a good meal and a few coins. And so he was invited here to play for everyone. Very cool. Uh, all right. And uh, uh, as Odeon finishes playing, a smattering of applause can be heard from, you know, pockets of people in the room. Y you had an impression, but, you know, actually, you know what? What I'm going to have you do, just to, you know, to see, to see how well you did in, in, in this performance, I want you to, uh, and I'm sorry, this is the first roll of the, of the, of the entire adventure for this show, That's but terrible. I'm going to have you roll a performance check for me, please. Uh, is that a D20? Uh, so yeah, if you go into D&D Beyond yep. and you, uh, on your character sheet, you click yep. the number beside per uh, performance. You should, uh, you click that as you roll your dice. Uh, so nine plus eight, 17. 17. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, you know what? It actually, you, you're, the, the performance went well. Um, you, at first, you know, it was a little bit of like kind of quick little applause, but then, you know, people started to kind of catch on and, you know, and, and they, they enjoyed your, uh, your playing and, uh, and even like, uh, as you descend off, uh, the stage, um, uh, like you can basically get, you know, some folks kind of like give you a nod and, you know, uh, pat you on the back as, as you kind of like, uh, roll by, um, and, you know, and some folks even, uh, add a, a couple silver and copper coins in a sack that's basically in front of you on the, on the stage. Um, so you can basically, you can your, uh, your mage hand uh, to lift up the bag, pull the strings shut as, uh, as the hand, and then place it in your pack hanging from the back of your chair. Uh, and then using your beacon stone, you tap twice and to move forward uh, off the stage and towards the, the bar. Uh, the furball looks down at you and starts pouring uh, a, a, like a, a pint of something for you. What, what, what would is your normal, what would be your normal like regular drink that you would order at the bar? What do you recommend for this establishment? Uh, well, the furball kind of looks at you and, uh, and he says, hmm, well, with a performance like that, I would say 
you know what? You deserve the finest top, like, IPA ale. Uh, I, like, you know, it's got a little bit of a kick, but it's got an earthy sort of flavor to it uh, that I, you know, it's got, like, some hints of uh, raspberry in there. Um, unless you're allergic to raspberry, I can, you know, give you something else. If, But uh, how, what would you think about that, little fellow? Would you serve the finest patrons? Oh, we're talking the finest. And he kind of winks over at you. Uh, and he goes, I think I may have just the thing. He goes uh, in behind the bar and kind of pulls out a, a, a bottle. Um, it's It's got, a, it's got a, a tiny bit of dust because you can tell that this bottle is just not really well, uh, like, you know, used a lot. Um, but he feels like he kind of looks at it, kind of looks at the bottle. And, you know, actually he's like, Ah, oh, you know what? No, hold on. He puts that back down, picks up another bottle. It's a little more fancier. It's got like a kind of a green, a greenish sort of a look to it. Uh, it's about half filled, uh, and he kind of like wipes the, the label a little bit from from the dust, and uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a little bit of a, a, a whiskey. Um, it's like, um, how do you feel about this, like my, my little friend? It depends how much does it cost. For you, for that performance, I'm gonna need you to roll persuasion uh, roll for okay. me. So, 11? Uh, 11. Okay. For you, one gold, please. Okay. All right. So you want to you want to you want to buy yourself a glass? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So he pours you he pours you a glass and he kind of just uh, uh, brings it down to you. Do you have like on your wheelchair like a like a tray or are you able to hold it with your hands? What uh, would like uh, he Mage hand. Okay, perfect. Mm-hmm. Mage hand, hundred percent. So he, you lift you you lift up your mage hand. You cast it, and he puts the the glass in, in the hand, and he and you kind of bring, can bring it towards you, and and uh, and and you know sip it away. Now, uh, question for you is um, how like how long do you think you stay at the at, at the bar after your performance? Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, all right, so uh, like with you have some stuff in the back because uh, you know there is like a little bit of a a, a green room for for your stuff. So you kind of left some things in in, in there. Um, so as you kind of like make your make your way out uh, towards the back, and there's like a back door there, and you uh, as you kind of enter the alley, um, you, you you see uh, what looks like about three men kind of just sort of stand uh, like set kind of standing in the alley. Uh, they're kind of just leaning up against the wall. Um, one, uh, two are basically, you know, uh, they have uh, plate mail armor on. Um, they're kind of like, you know, soldiers. Uh, and then the other one um, has uh, has a red shawl um, with a pendant of a dragon's head uh, attached near his his chest. Um, the shawl drapes atop a uh, plate mail armor, uh, and you can see that there is a large scar across his cheek. Uh, he also wears a pair of circular spectacles that have glowing blue lenses. Um, and uh, uh, I want, uh, also I want you to roll, I want you to roll a perception check for me. Okay. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So the 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 man kind of comes up to you, uh, and uh, he he says, "Odeon." Uh, that depends. I know who you are. I... And instantly, instantly, um, and if you want to to react, you can. Um, I uh, he starts to kind of move his hands in a hypnotizing motion as you start to kind of hear the beginnings of vocals of a siren song begin to envelop you. Uh, I want you to just to roll. Um, let me see here. I want you to roll a, a wisdom uh, saving throw for me. Plus one? Yeah. Two? Two? Uh, what'd, you roll on the, what'd you roll on the die? Uh, a one? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so suddenly you start to kind of feel like a bit wobbly in your in your chair. Your vision kind of starts to fade as the siren song begins to kind of get louder and louder, and every, the, the 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 sort of almost like a, a vignette of fog kind of just starts to cloud your vision. And then suddenly you're out. 
And the only thing you can remember is the bitter, cold breeze. We're going to jump to another memory. The cheers and jeers from the crowd echo as they all focus on a fighting pit in the middle of the large warehouse. Candlelight shines overhead as if to focus all eyes on it. Light-colored sand blankets the floor as spots of red blood stain areas of the pit. The crowd gathers around the railing, looking down to the 10-foot pit below. A large armored orc stands in the pit along the side, his arms crossed but watching every move the combatants make. A large bugbear holds his side as he breathes heavily. Two of its ribs are broken. He smiles as he looks towards his opponent. See him. Why don't you describe your character for me? Yeah. So standing at an impressive five foot two, covered in what was once well-sewn garments, but can now be seen as eclectic, covered in patchwork that conceals tales of different journeys, encounters, and life experiences. She's got muddy brown trousers cut jaggedly at the hem of each leg with a pair of leather, poorly tied boots. There's probably one that is untied and potentially trippable. But atop these pieces would be a plain cream colored blouse untucked from the trousers, but comfortably seated behind a forest green vest. But if you look closely at this vest, you can see tiny stems revealing precious blooms of daisies that seem to have been picked and stowed away for safekeeping. Showcasing nice. uh, some tan freckled skin with fingerless leather gloves blanketing their hands that are seemingly busy as their fingers twiddle between one another as their body language is like turning and her head can't seem to stop to focus on one particular thing because of an expression of a slight nervous smile with wide pale green unsured eyes that are kind of hidden behind these wisps of brown mousy long hair love it uh okay so i uh as part of uh your, your characters that uh, i'm gonna have to ask you to uh roll a, a chronic fati fatigue check uh so i'm gonna <laughs> yes. have you roll uh one d20 for me okay 18 18 <laughs> okay perfect then you are totally fine for the day Ooh. uh and you know, just for the heck of it, because you're in the pit, you're about to, you know, you see this bugbear in front of you? I want you to roll initiative. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love this. Our first combat of the game. Uh, 17. 17. Uh, all right. So you start off. You are, are uh, at first initiative order. So I want you to, uh, so the, the bugbear kind of like, you know, He's standing off to the side. You kind of gave him a little bit of a, a kick. Uh, he's kind of holding his, you know, his uh, the side of his ribs. Like some, it might be a bruise here and there from uh, from. So you've already kind of, as you wipe the kind of little bit of like a, a, a blood from your face. Yeah, as she's wiping that away, just you've got to do better than that. And she <laughs> would then kind of buck like back a little try. bit and get into her uh, a, a stance so that she could. Uh -huh. We'll just do an arm strike. Uh, unarmed strike? Okay. Yeah. We'll keep it light. 18. Uh, it hits. Okay, perfect. Uh, roll for damage. Do I have to hurt the man's? Uh, I mean, you, you can. <laughs> uh, you, uh, I mean, you're in this, you're in, you're in a fighting pit. Good. So let's just, right. yeah. Uh, that is a nine. Nine. Okay, perfect. A bludgeoning. Nine of bludgeoning. Yeah. All she right. Would, she would uh, go right back for, for his nose as well. Ah, okay. Piece uh, of your own medicine. <laughs> Love it. So as you come through, you kind of it, 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 you throw you throw a punch, and it like goes straight for the nose. <laughs> you can feel that like there, there there's a break there. Uh, like you you kind of oh, you snap sorry, something. Kind of. <laughs> Just for oh, we'll see how sorry you are after this. And he comes at you with uh with also uh an arm arm armed attack. Uh, let me just does a twelve hit you? Uh, no. No. Okay. Uh, so he kind of like uh, tries to be able to like swing immediately right back, but uh, you kind of just duck underneath his his because uh, you're obviously you know using your using your size to your advantage. You kind of, he sw like, he swings over you, and then you kind of duck, and his swing goes absolutely wide. Uh, and it is uh, now your turn again. Sweet. Yeah, we're gonna keep up with the unarmed strike. So, okay. Good old bloody knuckles is what we're playing. Cool. Uh, uh, is that it? Fourteen. 
uh, just misses. Uh, attack basically just slammed down uh, his arms uh, towards you. So does a thirteen hit? Nope. All right. So he, as he, you know, he brings it brings down his sort of, uh, his arms. Uh, he basically uh, like you kind of just duck and uh, like dodge and uh, duck out, like uh, kind of roll yourself out of the way. Uh, and he kind of like come like comes in a little bit off balance uh, as uh, as his sort of like his swing kind of goes like he put almost his entire weight onto his arms, uh, and he kind of like just stumbles for uh, like a, a two steps forward a little bit. Uh, so it's uh, now uh, your turn again. Please uh, roll another attack roll, please. Um, I would like to try to trip him. Oh, you want to trip him? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, if it does damage, that's because of his fall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, not 20. 20? Uh, not, not 20? Yep. Yeah, okay. All right, not 20. the ground. <laughs> she says as she swoops so underneath his ankle. You kind to, of you know, like, like the yeah. buckle behind your knee that people yes. do to mess with you? Yeah. Real I love annoying. it. So you kind of like you throw your leg out and you kind of just hit that that bit part of your knee and then he just stumbled like he, as he was already stumbling forward he kind of just fall, uh, falls uh, onto the ground. Um, uh, uh, roll, uh, yeah, roll for some uh, bludgeoning damage for me. Okay. Seven. Seven. Okay. All right. You know he's 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 he's, he's pretty hurt. He's pretty hurt. Uh, he's definitely. I'll make it clear. Hurt. This is non-lethal. Uh, oh yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah, this is hundred percent non lethal. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is just a brawling pit. You're totally yeah. You're totally fine. You're not. <laughs> this is no fighting to the death uh, type thing. Uh, all right. It could be. So okay, he's gonna take his movement to be able to uh, to get up, and he trying to like, scrambles his, his way up. Uh, he, he spins around, and he's just gonna you know d- just uh, do a running charge uh, right towards you, uh, and just try to you know knock you against the against the wall. Uh, so I'm gonna roll attack roll and. Yeah, I got a nat twenty. Um, so oh, that's good. Look at us, one on one. There we go. So he, he he charges right at you, and he just like he kind of picks like he, he kind of scoops you up off the ground, what? and and he kind of just like slams you against the wall. Oh. Uh, and so I'm gonna roll. Alan's uh, good. Alan's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so he's gonna do, roll uh, two six damage. Six and. Two, so eight, uh, eight bludgeoning damage. Uh, you take a yours, uh, perfect. And uh, now it's uh, now it's your turn. You're kind of pinned, up, like he kind of he doesn't pin you against the wall. He just kind of like just throws you against it, and you just kind of just uh, fall. Uh, but he is kind of like standing over you. Um, yeah. Since she's below, she's gonna once again then kind of utilize this lower ground to do the same, like lunge at him but at his leg to then bring him down where she's tackling on top of him okay okay perfect yeah roll uh yeah roll roll for attack on that one wow balance in life <sighs> oh okay love balance. Uh, so as you tried to like you know lunge forward towards his uh towards his legs he's <laughs> like he's seen this like this move from you before like so he kind of stands uh and then sort of a defensive so he, he like as you kind of hit all f- like you know five foot two uh oh like oh, just over a couple hundred pounds like he just, he just kind of like looks at you and just like Okay, uh, and he like he, like you're kind of like right in front of him. He then goes to like pick you up from the scruff and uh, Wait, like from the back down. of your neck and just like and just and just throws you uh, across the pit. Um, so I'm gonna, or at least he's gonna try to. Um, so I'm gonna roll. Uh, uh, there's a twenty-two. Uh, it does. Okay, so uh, yeah, he picks you up from the back of the neck, you know, and just throws you across, and uh, and you land. Um, not you don't hit the wall, um, but uh, you kind of just you know uh, you, you kind of land on the on on the ground. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna roll uh, just you know a d6 damage because it's just bludging. You're just in the ground. Floor uh, damage. So four damage. All right. Uh, and, uh, and you can, like, you're, you're kind of, like, hold, uh, like, your arm, and it's kind of, like, a, 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 it's a, it's a little bit sore as you kind of, like, as you, as you get up. Um, what do you do, what do you do next? Um, is there anything around me that's grabbable? Uh, Small. no. Uh, it's just sand and, you know, just, you know, and then the referee, which is the, just the orc kind of overlooking everything. <laughs> With my untied boot, can I take it off and throw it? Yeah, yeah, if you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So sliding across the ground, she would immediately just kind of scramble to to get onto her butt and then pull off her shoe. And as she just 
then gets on her knees to give herself some leverage, and then bucks back to toss her shoe at this. Okay. Uh, roll for attack with the yeah. shoe. <laughs> Improvised weapon. Yeah. Uh, 20 not natural. Oh, dirty 20? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that hits. Um, <laughs> my God, I don't, I don't even <laughs> roll damage for that. For that. Um, I guess it's... Is it unarmed? No, it's improvised like weapon. It's an improvised weapon, yeah. Um, I'll just say, you know what? Just roll, roll, uh, roll, roll a d6 for me. Oh, six. Six. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. That. That. Okay. As you, as you, as you wind up and you, th and you just kind of like very quickly throw a uh, shoe. Like he's kind of caught off guard, and uh, and it, it literally kind of like you have a perfect sort of like uh, has a perfect arc. And before he can even be able to like to do anything, it just hits him like right in the eye, uh, and just like it kind of like uh, it's like ah. And it's also got like a bit of sand in there because you know the sand in the grass. So he's it's got like a little boot. sand kind of goes right in. Uh, and you know, it's a dirty boot. So yeah. So he's you know. Oh, he's he's hurt a lot. Um, you, you basically <laughs> kick him down. Yeah. So now he's gonna like he's he's stumbling a bit. He's he's trying to be able to get like, get it out of his eye, and then he just kind of like starts kind of lumbering towards you, and is just gonna try to try to swing for you. Uh, and uh, and let's see if he can if he can connect. I'm actually, gonna roll this at a, at a disadvantage because he's you know he's semi blinded. Uh, well, that's a natural thirteen on the die, and so let's uh, see that. Uh oh, that's a seven. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm hit. assuming a twelve does not hit. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so yeah, he he throws his, his his like his arm wide, and he's just like kind of stumbling, and he just barely and you just... steps over to the side and is watching. Exactly. Uh, and so now uh, you're you're one bootless, but uh, it's now your turn. Is he kind of like just stumbles? That just means now she has one of her grippers on the ground. <laughs> so... Okay. <laughs> she um, I just want to push him over. <laughs> Push him over. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just almost playfully, like just give up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, he's kind of close to the to the uh, to the wall. So if you just want to push him and just you know knock him against <laughs> the wall, you can totally do that for sure. Yeah. Let's give it a go. Uh, Twenty one. Oh yeah, that totally hits. Yeah, one hundred percent. And yeah, so he he like he just again he kind of just push him like extreme like really hard, and he just like, as he's still stumbling, and he and he and his head kind of like hits the uh, uh, the edge of the uh, of the of the wall, and uh, and, he, and just kind of like hits like that perfect sort of spot. Uh, roll damage for me. <laughs> Let's say like yeah, just a, uh, uh, like a like a you know what? Because it's kind of like a bludgeoning damage. I'll just say like a roll of d8 because it's it's you know gets wood. Oh. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, seven. Seven. Sorry. All right. So he he he, he hits he, he, like literally he kind of hits the the edge of the, the of the ledge of the of the wall like right in the middle of a smack dab in the middle of his forehead and he kind of just like his eyes start to or at least this one eye that's open he kind of just like. Slightly kind of go, like goes rolls to the back of his head and he like plummets like straight on the ground. Uh, the uh, the crowd just goes absolutely wild and you know and there also is some like booze because you know no one thought that a like a, a like a, a five foot two creature can go up against a large bugbear but here we go well this is it so you know some people kind of lost like lost some money on you but some people kind of also won big <laughs> because the odds were against you and uh so the orc kind of comes over to you and like lifts your arm up in the air <laughs> wrestling style and just be like and we have our winner and the crowd goes absolutely nuts and uh and you, you know he leans up to the ref can we get him some ice yeah we'll get to talk to the barkeep well you'll, you'll be fine uh and he okay, kind of whispers that down to you so uh so he kind of like uh like the crowd kind of starts to disperse they're you know going to the bar like uh be grabbing another drink and then they're going or they're going to the you know the bookies to try to be able to book their next bet, next bet for the next fight uh and uh the orc kind of opens up a uh a door uh that has stairs that kind of leads up towards uh towards the the rest of the crowd the crowd kind of like you know uh, gives you like pats on the shoulder and you know and uh and they're, they're like they're like you you just want me some money. You just want me some money. <laughs> she's terrified. And it's also every time that she gets pat on the shoulder, she's a little sensitive. So it's like, ah, ah, yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like some of them are like just a little too hard. And it's kind of like, <laughs> good job, kid. I appreciate it. So you kind of uh, uh, where do you, where do you go? Do you go to the uh, to go to the bar? Go to the back to kind of like uh, to the like the locker room, quote unquote area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would probably do the latter um, okay. to re re reassist her 
dressing situation as well as put her shoe back on, I guess. Okay, okay. Uh, perfect. So you kind of go into sort of like makeshift sort of like locker room. Uh, and as you uh, enter the room, uh, roll a uh, perception uh, check for me. Where is my perception? 13. Okay. Um, so you see, uh, you know, three three figures just kind of just standing there and just kind of like just sitting and just kind of uh, just waiting as as you enter the room, they kind of stand up. Um, two of which look like they're, they're soldiers. Uh, and then uh, the other one has like a red shawl with a, a dragon's pendant uh, on it and uh, has, you can see a scar across his cheek. And he's wearing uh, some uh, round spectacles with uh, with basic glowing blue lenses on them. Uh, and uh, he, he, he kind of acknowledges you. Rot? Yes. Do I recognize them? Um, roll a history check for me. Okay. Natural 20. Natural 20. Okay. Um, you don't. Wow. Okay. Um, you don't <laughs> recognize. Um, you, you don't recognize uh, him specifically, um, but uh, you do recognize uh, the the pendant. Um, the the pendant is uh, it, because it's a, a dragon's head. Um, it is a pendant for uh, for for a, a large family um, of uh, Ver like a Varen Riverbane. Uh, Varen is a well-to-do lord of uh, of Waterdeep, and um, he has you know uh, adventuring parties across the entire world. Um, and but he's like he he has a reputation, and um, I think with a nat 20 you would know uh in certain circles his reputation is is uh flawless he's a he's a uh, well-to-do man of the people uh but in other circles and sort of like the seedier circles um which you know you found yourself uh, self in, in in a few a few times in in the past um just from, from rumors or whatever but in certain circles he's he's uh, uh notorious uh he's a He's a very cr a cruel uh, leader at times um, to to his enemies. Um, so you recognize uh, you recognize that that uh, part of the, and you recognize that this is um, um, that this is one of the his captains. Um, if anyone has this sort of this dragon's pendant on them, uh, you know that that's kind of like one of his his uh, captain, Varen's captains. Ah, okay. And she would be uh, sitting down and hearing her name, looking up, brushing hair out of her eye that's definitely caught in her eye and it's uncomfortable as she's pulling like, the sweat strand out. Mm -hmm. Do I know you? She says, looking at him, recognizing what you had said that she would, but also noticing she's never encountered them, to her knowledge. No, I don't think so. Don't Why think do you I'm know me? I... I'm sorry. It's it's for fun. I didn't mean it if I hurt you too. No, no offense taken. No, I okay. I've I've uh, I, I no. You know I'm not. And he starts like immediately, kind of like uh, putting up, uh, sort of moving his hands, and he it can get your like you look into his his, his spectacles, and his uh, eyes start to glow even even brighter. Uh, and I want you to uh, roll a uh, wisdom saving throw for me. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Six. Six. Okay. Um, yeah, you're uh, uh, immediately as as kind of like the the sort of the fatigue from the fight and and everything. Your your vision starts to kind of fade uh, it, like a, a little bit, and you can you can hear uh, the vo vo like again vocals of siren song starts to kind of surround you on a nat twenty that you know a little bit about these spectacles that they also are spectacles of charming, and I know that you had I think you have advantage on uh, being yes. charmed, so I want you to roll another wisdom saving throw again for me please 14 14 okay so uh as the as the the you know the vocals start to kind of get louder and louder uh like and just starts to kind of envelop your your mind uh again the vignette of a fog just starts to kind of uh come across your vision and uh as you sort of start to fade into darkness uh uh like the captain kind of like starts to kind of like comes to, to close to you and close to your face and goes you will know who i am soon and then immediately you're out and the only thing you can the next moment you, you that the, the next moment you remember is you're in this room very extremely bitter cold room and uh and that's it uh okay uh and now we're gonna move on to sunlight shines through a frosted window dust particles float listlessly catching the bright light 
we see a wooden bench in a small cottage home. The bench is, a chaotic, is chaotically organized. It has function and order amongst the chaos of books open to specific pages. Chemical components are littered across the desks. Scrolls and scroll casings are piled along the back of the workbench. A candle is burning its last bit of wax in the candle holder. Gentle snoring breaks the room's silence as resting her head in her arms, a half-orc with ginger-red hair is gently sleeping. She had been up all night working and fell asleep. A gentle rapping against her bedroom door as an old man with a big bush, bushy white beard and a bedrobe comes walking in holding a steaming teacup. He smiles as he quietly walks over to her, sets the teacup down on one of the few empty places on the bench and rests a gentle hand on her shoulder. Quick inhale of air into her no a nose as she quickly awakens. She wipes a little bit of drool from her cheek and, and tusks. Child, uh, did, did you fall asleep again last night? Colo, would you like to describe your character for me, please? Sure. Um, I'm a, a, a half-orc. Um, I have pale green skin, um, and I'm dressed in uh, cloth clothing, fabric clothing, um, with long sleeves and long uh, trouser legs and it's that that kind of fabric that it's well made it's a really well made uh outfit um it's not really very protective uh but i'm shifting around in it a little like i'm not really this com i'm not really comfortable in in this in this clothing um i have uh ginger hair that's pulled back into a clasp it's like uh it's not been brushed in maybe five months like it's just like up it goes like that's it it's just right i don't want to cut it but it's out of the way there we go whoop up it goes um and uh yeah i got drool all over my face it's actually kind of like going upwards because i was laying slightly wonky it's like upwards mm -hmm. towards my eye um uh and i have uh, a little bit of a sniffle i'm real tall um i'm real tall and i'm unusually strong like even for a uh, a half orc like yeah like my upper body like she hench um mm -hmm. and uh, uh I, i'm frequently like wrinkling my nose like i've caught like i'm constantly about to sneeze okay uh so yeah uh and, and as uh as the old man kind of like this uh is still has uh, has his hand on uh, on his shoulder he kind of uh hands you uh the cup of of just uh, uh, amazingly smelling like a uh, uh, cinnamon and, uh, and and sort of uh, lilac, uh, kind of like a, a smell to the to the tea that that uh, he's poured in there. Um, he, he repeats again. Did you fall asleep last night working again? Uh, no, um, no, uh, no, um, yes. And I take the cup of tea from him and just like inhale it. <laughs> he he kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I was just doing it myself, and you can kind of see that he had like his his had, like have like you can still like see like imprints of of uh, uh, like just where his arm kind of like rested on his uh, on his head on the side of his head is still kind of like the uh, you can see the kind of red marks on on his on his cheek, uh, and his beard is kind of like you know pushed a little bit to the side as he kind of like and it has like a little bit of like kind of uh, wetness to it like a strands as if he kind of like had drooled on it uh, himself. So oh, I've been there. We've been pulling so many long nights these past few weeks oh well i i need to, I, I need to, i need to go back to sleep but um uh I, I wanted to remind you that we need to pick up some supplies over at the market this morning right before you know the good supplies kind of like end up could you be a doll and, and go get that for me please child uh, yeah i i can sort that out do you do you do you have a list and like as i as i'm asking him about his the list i'm like wiping his his arm which has got like maybe yesterday's food on it maybe something else like who sure. knows miscellaneous oh, uh, liquid oh right i forgot about that oh and he picks up like a crumb and you know start, like it puts it in his mouth and goes oh chicken uh, and, and yes, and he kind of he kind of uh, goes into his uh, into his robe, and, and he and he hands you a list. Nothing major, just uh, you know some similar components that you know like, that I need, and uh, that's that's uh, just uh, that's all I need, child. 
oh, okay. I like, I look at the list and look back at him really quizzically, turn the list round to show him and point at it. And there's like three items on the list and then it like descends into completely like uh, in, unintelligible, can't see whatever the rest of them thinks. So what, what's this one? Uh, you know, I can't quite recall. Okay, let well, me th- um, let me think. Um, we could you know, retrace something. your steps. Um, uh, let's see. I I woke up. I went to go put on some t- uh, the, the kettle on, and then I poured a tea, and was and I wrote the list. And I got distracted because the you know the tea you know the I hear the wood kettle going. I can't remember. Well, I'm, I'm sh- sorry. I'm sure it will come to you if it's that important. I will um, send you a message if I remember. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just get what I'll just get what I can read. I like wipe the last of the crumbs off him and. I, thank you, thank you. I appreciate. It. And he kind of like he just sort of dazedly like just starts kind of like slowly kind of walk out, walks out of, out of the room. Uh, I trust you, child. I trust you. And he just kind of like is just like shimmies and kind of like shuffles down the uh, down the hallway um and yeah you can see outside that uh, there's a there's, there's the sunlight's kind of just you know peeking across the horizon uh you can hear uh the town uh, around you that is starting to kind of shopkeeps are kind of uh, starting to kind of uh open up their their wares for the day and uh you now have a, a list of things that uh, that you need to get is there anything you need to prepare to be able to to go out for for the day to do some errands uh yeah i'm going to use my mage hand to grab my uh, boots which are over the other side of the room in a little cupboard so I want my mage hand to open the cupboard door and then pull my boots out like scoop scoop them up and pull them over to me um, and uh, the boots are like really lightweight they, they're actually kind of more like slippers but just with a slightly hardened um, sole mm-hmm. uh, and I, dra- I drag them on my feet and um, and lace my lace my boots up um and I think I probably wouldn't have put it away, would I? <laughs> Not in this house. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's uh, you know this is a this is a, like two wizards live in this in the, in this abode. There's just stuff everywhere. <laughs> this is a very chaotic household. Um, I, uh, I, st- I I push myself up to to stand up um, with both of my hands beside me, and I'm a little unsteady as I as I get up, but I find my balance, um, and I take a a, a a few short paces over to my wheelchair um, to take a seat, um, and I lift my legs into uh, the uh, onto the footrest. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, and yeah, as you as you kind of like wheel out to the, out the cottage, um, you kind of open up outside, and you're kind of on a small uh, street, uh, in that um, um, you kind of see some other like cottages just sort of down the uh, down the way, and um, you know there's some there's some shopkeeps kind of like you know opening up like uh, kiosk booths that are just in you know, lining down the street. It's a, uh, you can definitely tell that this is kind of like a, 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 a kind of a main fair a thor- a thoroughfare. Even though it's a small street, it's kind of like this is kind of like a, uh, a like a, a, a specific artery into the into the town that you're in. Um, and uh, but you know that, uh, that the general store is is a little bit more into the center towards the center of town. Um, it'll take you about like um, about like 15 minutes to be able to to make your way uh, over there. Um, as you're as you're kind of like uh, rolling through the street, uh, I want you to um, make a perception check for me. Okay. Um... It's a 10. 10? Okay. Um, you, you kind of, as you're kind of like, you know, you're, you're, you're definitely willing wrong. And, and um, as you kind of turn a corner uh, into an alley, which you know is like kind of like a bit of a shortcut to, uh, to kind of get towards the general, uh, like uh, the, uh, the general store, um, you hear uh, footprints of uh, people, uh, uh, of uh, figures kind of like following in behind you. And you suddenly realize yeah you're kind of alone uh for a moment and um uh you turn around and you see uh two soldiers um and a man with a red shawl uh and a pendant on it uh with those sort of uh spectacles with blue glowing uh lenses on them and uh and he looks over uh, he looks over at you uh and actually i want you to roll another uh perception check for me please that's a 16. 
16. Okay. Um, you also uh, notice underneath his shawl, he's, he's got, uh, uh, he wears like basically um, plate mail armor, but um, you can kind of see underneath the, sh- the, the shawl that um, a bit of his, his right arm is actually shorter um, than the other and uh, is there, and he's uh, missing uh, a hand. Um, and uh, he kind of ap- approaches you. Uh, in good. Have I met this man before? Uh, roll a history check for me. Oh, damn, that was a two. Uh, that's a five. Okay. Uh, no, you've, you, okay. you don't recognize him. Uh, you don't recognize any of the soldiers. Uh, and, uh, and, that, and yeah, you don't reckon, uh, recognize him at all. Have I seen the kind of glasses that he's wearing before? Do I know anything about those, specifically the glasses? Oh, uh, yeah, actually, you know what? Um, why don't you roll an Arcana check for me? That's an 11. I've got a plus five on that, and it was still an 11. <laughs> That's that. That's fine. Um, yeah, you you know that 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 uh, that those that, that pair of spectacles is uh, enchanted uh, in, in some way. It's got some. It's got some magic juice in it, uh, but you can't okay. tell uh, uh, what what it is. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. So he kind of like asks you again. Is your name Inga? Who's asking? Concerned party. Concerned about what? Exactly. About your future. My future? What? S- sorry, who are you? And as he, uh, as you kind of like, or start kind of, you have like a little bit of your defenses up, he immediately starts to kind of uh, like uh, wave his hands and then you see the eyes start to glow. Uh, and, uh, roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Are you kidding me? I have a plus four and it's a seven. Okay. Uh, yeah. Before he even like, uh, like he kind of just like he's he, like again, your vision starts to fade into into darkness, uh, and uh, uh, like the, the songs of, of uh, vo- like a siren song, kind of like the vocals kind of envelop your mind, and uh, and then yeah, your uh, your vision fades in darkness, and then immediately you're just kind of brought back to the sudden sensation of uh, of a cold breeze. The branches come up out of nowhere as the snap and crack cutting into your skin as you are being chased through the night in the dimly lit forest. Uh, you grin as you run. They are, they are in your world. You don't know how they found you, but three men on horseback accosted you as you exited a tavern. Immediately, you sensed a vibe of, you gotta get the hell out of here. Uh, so you ran into the deep, thick forest. The cuts from the thin uh, branches are part of your uh, war paint. Little tiny scars on your face and arms align your skin from frequent running through the thick brush of the forest. Uh, Morgan, why don't you describe your character for us? Yeah, absolutely. So this is Morka, and she is a wolf. Uh, and you can see she has her hair, it's cut in kind of like a short red hair with um, kind of tan greenish skin. Uh, she's average in height and extremely young, uh, at the age of 30, which is young for an elf, so I learned I'm still newish to D&D, so bear with me here. Um, Sorry. She looks extremely tired too, with long bags under her eyes, but she can't recall a time when she ever not felt tired. She's wearing studded leather armor, and she also has a hood that she tries to keep up as often as possible to kind of obscure and keep herself on the DL. Um, she has brown eyes, and she is also, I think that's about it. I can't think of anything else. No, no, you, 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 you're doing great. Um, so also as well, uh, I want you to uh, roll a, a chronic fatigue check for me. Uh, so roll 1d20. I did wow, you're rolling that 20. Okay, uh, then you're good. Yeah, no, you are like, you're totally fine. <laughs> you're, today is your day. You have the most amount of like strength for the day as much as possible. More than You have more spoons than you can know what to deal with. Uh, you, you won't be able to save them for tomorrow, but hey, you're going to have extra by the end of today. Uh, so, okay. Uh, now I want you to roll roll uh, an athletics check for me as well uh, as you're running uh, through because uh, I, like there's the three the uh, two soldiers and, the, and a man with a red shawl uh, had cost you after a tavern and they're chasing you on horseback through uh, through the forest which is uh, I believe your natural sort of uh, your terrain uh, your favorite terrain so yeah roll an athletics check for me actually you know what? I'm gonna roll it uh, roll it at an advantage so roll it and then roll it again so, yeah I got it to work Okay, that's a five, but roll it again. I'm going to give you advantage. Yeah, so I got a five. Uh, no, you can roll it again. So click on that number again. I'm giving you advantage. So basically, whenever I give you advantage, it means you can roll uh, roll twice. 
and you take the highest number. Yep. Okay, it's a little bit better. It's an eight. Okay, I can I, I can see that. Uh, all right. So as you're kind of running through the uh, through, through the forest and you're being chased, like you can hear them about like maybe about thirty to to, to forty meters and behind you, um, but you can still like you can still hear them. Um, but at like as you're kind of like running as fast as you can, you're you're trying to jump over a, a branch, but your your foot kind of gets caught and uh, you kind of stumble into in, into into a bush and you kind of like uh, and it kind of knock your body against a, a against a tree um and uh and and you could like you hear in behind you uh one of the uh, one of the men screaming she's down she's down stop get off get off and they they get off force back um, now i want you to to roll a uh, a stealth check for me please 16. okay and then i'm going to uh i'm gonna roll a uh perception check uh on the see if they could if they can actually be able to uh potentially see you uh so you kind of start to kind of like just fade like you kind of uh, sort of crawl a little bit of ways pat like past the bush and you're kind of you know sneakily kind of walking around and you're trying to be able to uh maybe kind of like sneak past them as you kind of run back to to uh past the where they where they were where you were in the opposite direction of where you were running from uh and they are now like uh, basically um, the, 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 the man with the red shawl is standing, is kind of like walking in through the forest and the, uh, two guards, uh, are kind of like, they, they spread out a little bit, like about in about 10 feet, uh, separating each other. And they're kind of just looking throughout, uh, the, uh, throughout the forest. And so far, uh, they definitely didn't clock where you landed. They, they heard the, the, you know, that you tripped, um, but, and, uh, and you kind of like the grunt of like, oh, as you hit the tree, but, um, they, they didn't clock where you where it was um so as you're kind of like uh sneaking around is there anything you kind of want to do uh while you're uh while you're trying to sneak past yeah what type of forest is this um it's it, it's kind of it, it's sort of thick it's like you're kind of like you're not uh, uh, kind of near the paths like the regular sort of like uh ridden paths that uh, you know people can kind of use to go through from between because there's like two there's like a town in between like this sort of group of like this grouping of forest but so you're you are not like you're in you're in a spot of like a deep forest where uh essentially like there's there's no like there's many places either to hide or to like this is like this is your terrain like you know how to be able to get through this um and uh and uh so yeah like they are uh, like you, you it's, it's pretty thick rush if you want if you can you can be able to you know sneak past if, if, if possible but uh, um or if you you know you want to attack or whatever uh up to you i think what i'll try to do can i try to climb up one of the trees and see if i can hide out there uh sure uh i'm gonna say um, I'm gonna have you because this is gonna be a little bit different. So I'm gonna have you first roll. Um, actually, yeah, this will be kind of based on. Yeah, this. Yeah, you know what? This will be based. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna have you roll another athletics check for me. Okay. Uh, let me see. By the way, I like that it's in alphabetical order. This is helpful. Yes. Yep. <laughs> uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. Wow. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do pretty good. So uh, you kind of uh, you start as you like. You are just like you're pretty like you know this. Like you, you know this type of tree. You also know the kind of like how to be able to grip it in order to be able to like get your like uh, hands and feet kind of on it. And as you uh, as you climb, uh, I also want you to roll another stealth check for me. Six. Okay. Um, all right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna roll for there to see if they can be able to see you. Okay. Um, and at, like, so you, you, you climb up to, uh, how far do you climb up the tree? Uh, I'm going to try to climb up to the first biggest branch towards the first. Tree. Okay, yeah. perfect. So you kind of, you, you quickly kind of crawl up it. And, uh, as you sort of put your, uh, your foot, uh, like you pretty quick, you're able to do it pretty uh, quickly. And as you put your foot onto the, uh, onto the branch, it like creaks a little bit and um they uh the 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 men actually kind of like look into sort of their general direction um and they start walking uh towards you they haven't they haven't clocked you yet uh but they they, they heard the sound and they know that you're that you're in like in, in like they're kind of now walking uh towards you mm. all right i grip onto my crossbow and i'm realizing as i'm getting cornered there's no way out of this I don't think. 
so I decide impulsively to draw it at the character in the center. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so yeah. So well, yeah. Why don't you just uh, fire your crossbow? Uh, I would say like um, roll. T like so. Basically, what you do is you on your actions uh, in your character sheet. If you see like you uh, you see your crossbow, um, the where it says uh, hit DC. Uh, I want you to click on that plus number, um, and then I'm gonna have you roll it again because you can. You're gonna roll it at at advantage. Let's see what we got. Oh. So okay, 20. Like... Okay, so 22. All right, roll it again to see if maybe you crit. Okay, so 23. Okay, so we're going to take the 20, uh, take the 23. Uh, so you, you, you kind of you, you aim and and you shoot it, like basically, what are you aiming for? Are you aiming like uh, on, on his body? I'm aiming for his forehead. His forehead? Okay. All right. So as, as you, as you aim and kind of aim, you're aiming for, you're aiming for his head and um, as as you do so, uh, like instinctually, as f like faster than you've ever seen anyone before, instinctually, you see the arrow and you know it. You know it's gonna hit. Like you know, like it, it just in your head. Like you've done this before. Like you're you're pretty good shot. And, and uh, but uh, like in, like as so quick as fast as fast as he can, he, he he takes his left hand and quickly he grabs the bolt in midair. J inches away from his forehead and he looks up and uh and actually i want you to oh yeah no he now he, he knows he knows you're there and you start to see two like pin pricks of light uh from his eyes and they start to kind of grow wider like like brighter and brighter and brighter and i want you to roll a wisdom save for me so... yep okay uh 11 all right so suddenly you kind of like you're you're about ready to you know to take like to take him down or you know just hit you kind of hit and run away, but suddenly you kind of start to feel a little lightheaded and you're not sure what's what's going on. Um, but also you kind of like as you realize what's happening, you're starting to kind of be like 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 this is okay. This is this is a, this is a charming spell. Uh, so I want you to roll another wisdom saving throw because you do have advantage on being charmed. 19, okay. Sadly, it's not enough. I will say this for everybody. What you were trying to be able to hit was a DC of 25. Um, so uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so as like, unfortunately, like as like as you kind of realize you're being charmed, the thought, like the siren song kind of like, fa like kind of fades into your mind and fades louder and louder. Uh, and you realize it's like, oh, like it, it, as the fog kind of like starts to envelop your eyes. Uh, and uh, they like, as suddenly as you, uh, as you've, as the fog is just about to hit you, they're starting to kind of run towards you. You start to feel like your body kind of like slip off of the branch. And uh, just before your vision kind of go uh, goes away, you see like the, uh, the, 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 the sky kind of like move, like kind of go, like move away from you. And then suddenly black, you're now in this cold room uh, and, and you're not sure where you are. Okay. Now, lastly, but certainly not least, we have our last memory to go to. Deep in the mountain regions, carved into the rock face itself, lies a tall monastery. It shines brightly against the rising morning sun. A, wind, a winding path snakes through the rock towards the bottom of the mountain as we move closer. Several smaller buildings dot the sides of the main path towards the monastery. Several figures in similar dark green robes emerged from these buildings to tend to their morning chores of gardening, blacksmithing, and farming in what little space they have on the mountaintop. As we get even closer, the main tower of the monastery comes into view. Two smaller towers sit very close to the main larger tower in the center. The two towers are connected by a battlement uh, looking, uh, looking a long way down towards the front of the wood and metal gr uh, gate. It dwarves even the tallest of giants. Several monks in the same green robes, but with padded leather armor, stand guard on top of the gate overlooking the path up towards the monastery. Three figures approach the main gate on horseback. The one in the center wears a red shawl over his shoulders. Its color shines brightly against the sunlight. As we get closer, we see in the main tower about two thirds of the way up, several stained glass windows dot the outside with one large stained glass window depicting two monks in green robes in a fighting pose facing each other with their palms open towards each other. 
through the large stained glass window, we look inside to what is a large library with tall bookshelves on multiple floors overlooking a large open center with several long wooden tables. The room is silent as monks sit quietly studying. Some are running the library, walking to and fro and replacing books onto the shelves. On a table towards the left of the main central hub, we see several large stacks of books and sheets of paper with scribblings of notes surrounding a halfling as he studies a tome about half of his actual size. Mike, why don't you describe your character for us? Hello, everyone. My name is Yazir Umbrawood, and I hail from uh, a small patch of woods called Umbrawood. Um, I have studied many, many uh, tomes and have met many people uh, through the... Uh, just my travels and seeing people of different backgrounds and of uh, higher statures of me since, you know, being a, a very short statured person. Um, I wear, I don't need to wear much. I, I have um, like my pants are, and shirt are, are very light because I don't need armor. I am a, an, uh, um, a martial artist, uh, I would say, and um, unfortunately, due to a childhood accident, I did lose my right arm below the uh, the elbow um, from a uh, you know traveling in, in Umberwood and uh, trying to just parkour through the the woods. Um, unfortunately, slipped on one of the branches and fell on a bed of rocks and mangled my arm and um i decided that this wasn't going to stop me so i searched out for knowledge and found myself in the monastery okay um all right so uh, like uh, uh as you're kind of studying you got a whole bunch of like uh, uh, books and, and pages everywhere uh, a human monk with uh, with dark skin um uh, sort of like a, a shaved head, but like you can see, like there's sort of like a buzz of like a, a black hair uh, walks towards his ear and and sees him uh, deep in thought. His ear it is it's, it's it's done. Have you been here all night? It's not. It's it's morning. I I just yeah. I, I you just can't see the time. sun kind of like shining in. And it's only the first time that you actually recognize. Oh, uh, yeah, the sun's kind of like shining through the uh, the stained glass window. Oh, I was just in this so deep into this uh this tome that i've had and uh you know just always need to gain more knowledge i hear you but i mean like jeez i mean like i'm like hey i get it we're all monks here we're kind of you know we're, we're just chilling we study and you know we study we meditate that's that and then we practice that's what we do but i mean you know that you know take it like to that far uh far out there uh i'm just like what the heck are you even reading well um i'm reading this uh one text it's uh it's about um, elves and their vast history of um, just you know. Since I've I've come from woods, uh, I just wanted to see what their their homes were like. And uh, there's just such a plethora of knowledge here. I, I can't believe you haven't even seen this. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm just like again. I'm just here to you know to learn how to kick ass and take names, and uh, I'm all out of taking names. So, uh, let, let you know, hey, cool, whatever, whatever, dude. Um, by the way, uh, I think some visitors are kind of like down downstairs. They kind of want to. They kind of want to speak to you. Um, so yeah. So I just came up like you know uh, the elder kind of told me to come and grab you. I, Why I haven't me? even got my coffee yet. Why me? I don't though? know. They ask for you, they they ask for you by name. That's interesting. Um, did they describe me as just by my name, or just you know, just just your name? How how, how knowledgeable I've uh, you know, I just know things. <laughs> I mean, you, they know they also know things, and the things that they know is they know your name. Uh, that's all. I, that's all I can tell you, bud. Hmm. Um, I, I need, uh, since this morning, I haven't had anything to eat. Is there anything that I can, oh, actually, I have, uh, some honey bread. Would you like some honey bread? Hell to the mother effing yes. I am starving. <laughs> uh, here's this, um, uh, honey bread. This is a famous recipe from, uh, 
from my woods. Um, tell me how it tastes. Uh, he kind of he starts eating. He's like, damn, this is actually pretty good. Where did you, where did you get this recipe? Um, and do you oh, have more? Uh, um, I can't tell you this recipe, and and unfortunately, it's um, this this recipe is only in Elfish, and uh, and I understand that you don't like to study so much. So we'll uh, I, I I'll just I'll just give hey, you the man, bread I mean, instead just... of you know actually telling you the recipe because you know it's un- it's unfathomable you know for for someone like you. You know, I mean, you don't have to be a dick about it. I mean, you know, just just say it. I mean, like, I don't care. I told you, I gave you the message. They're down there waiting for you. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get my coffee. And he goes and he starts like kind of like eating it, like e- eating his uh, the honey bread, and uh, and he just kind of just saunters off. Like you can tell, like okay, because there are monks in this monastery that like you think that like oh they're like you know just chill and you know they meditate all the time. This one's just he's just here to learn how to build a kick ass. Um, so not exactly you know the best, but you know. It's, he, he he gives he's given like the medial tasks of the uh of the of the monastery um so yeah but yeah you have uh, you have some visitors waiting for you in the uh uh down uh, down in the uh, the lobby area okay so going down the stairs um am i able to you know recognize anything about them before actually getting closer to them as i like approach um yeah, as you approach, um, yeah, I want you to, yeah, well, let's first start off with the, with a, a history check for me, please. Sure. So just click history. Mm-hmm. And what'd you roll? I rolled a one. Yeah, you know nothing. Uh, you don't recognize, you don't recognize them at all. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you just, you just, but you see like two, two soldiers and a, and a dude with a, with a red shawl. Uh, oh I mean, the, red, the dude with the red shawl kind of looks cool. I can't believe this happened. <laughs> um so uh, uh as you, as you kind of like walk f- uh closer uh they uh the the monk who's been talking to them uh, you can tell that like you know the the monk is, is the is the chatter of the uh, of of this conversation and they kind of like uh you kind of like ah oh, yazir yes you're here thank uh, this is yazir he's uh one of our one of our monks here and uh he kind of like uh, ushers you to this uh this kind of like this private room off to the side and uh and the three figures kind of like walk to a uh, single file towards uh towards the room um what do you do um, I introduce myself, you know, greetings and salutations. My name is Yazir. Um, I heard that you've, you know, were inquiring about me. So, um, you know, well, I, let's just get to the, to, just to, to the chase. What, 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 what is, what is this, uh, meeting, uh, about? Well, uh, I've come a very long way, Yazir, and, uh, I have a conundrum. You see, I don't, and as as he kind of starts to talk, he's kind of like, you can tell he's stalling for time as he waits for the, the monk to, to leave and, and close the door in behind him. Uh, and as the, as the door closes, he says, I don't like you. I don't like your kind. You're undesirables to me. And immediately he just like starts to like, I, I am also not here for conversation. And he starts to uh, immediately kind of like uh, puts his hands into uh, into sort of like a, a hypnotizing sort of motion. Um, and I want you to, and his eyes start to kind of gl- uh, glow uh, from his uh, spectacles. And I want you to roll uh, another, or uh, a wisdom saving throw for me. Wisdom saving throw. And so 12. 12 okay um and uh i'll 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 let you get one um perception check off uh off of uh before like as you know vision starts to fade and uh and and siren song so i'm gonna let you roll a a perception check for me all right Ooh, 19 plus 2 is 21 you realize uh that you're you're kind of um being being charmed but there's nothing you can be able to do about it so you start to memorize everything about this uh uh this person and, and uh, you see the, the the dragon pendant on uh, on his uh, on his uh, on his cloak. You see the 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 details of the glowing spectacle eyes, and uh, and you also see underneath his shawl that uh, uh, that he like his uh, his right arm is shorter uh, and is missing it uh, is missing a hand. Looks like it's the 
similar kind of like amputation style as uh, as your arm is and uh, um, and as he like kind of like he starts to grab you as you're about to to, to fall over uh, and he kind of like he just kind of grabs you by the ruff of his neck and starts to kind of like uh, to uh, and then the two other soldiers start to uh, t- start to kind of grab they grab your arms uh, as well which is pretty you know pretty easy for them to do because you're you're a halfling so you're, you're like half their like their size um, and then as the vision starts to fade darkness again and then the next minute you know you're in a, a very uh, cold uh, bitter breeze um, and all of you you look up and as the lost memories of, of the past 24 hours come back to you you look around to find a few of you with similar looks on your faces of, of disbelief and confusion um I want everyone to roll me an insight check. Quick question, DM. Yes. Was this perchance asleep for me to heal oh, or no? Uh, yeah, uh, I will say nice yes. Roll. Yeah, <laughs> natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your long rest, one hundred percent. Yeah, um, this would be considered a long rest. Yeah. Oh, so we should roll as well for the fatigue or not? Oh yeah, uh, actually for you and for uh, uh, Morica, um, yeah. Why don't you roll, both roll a d twenty for me for your chronic fatigue check? What else are we rolling? Sorry, I missed it. Perception. Just uh, oh, and also yes, uh, in, insight check. Oh, insight. Okay, yeah. for insight, I got six. Six. Okay. I got a twenty three. Okay. Got a four. What the hell? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Um... I got twenty two. Chronic fatigue check. You roll a one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. All no right, way. So... I rolled a two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're the, doing the, great. The, the, you, and then I got a seven like, perception or insight. Seven, sorry. Seven insight. Okay. Uh, so I'll say that um, the, the two of you, Morka and and, uh, and Rot, you kind of look at each other. You kind of see the similar kind of like bags under your eyes and it's like and, and you know that you both of you kind of like woke up with a with a pretty or pretty bad morning uh i want to both of you to add one uh one point of fatigue uh on your uh on your character sheet uh i clicked on the one i'm exhausted uh, yep just a normal day okay uh and then sorry what did everyone uh roll on their insight check again sorry seven seven okay 23 22. Colo, what was that? 23 for me. 23. And uh, and Grant? All right, wait. So I have 12 on the left. Like a passive wisdom with insight. Right? Uh, no, that so that's, that's your passive. So that basically, that's something that uh, always happens. So in, in, like, in the... Um, in the skills sheet, like basically that long list of yeah. uh, things, you, cl- you click on the, uh, the number beside insight. Okay, so a four sheet. So you rolled a four? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, and Morgan, what did you roll for insight? I'm sorry. A six. Six. Okay. So a few, like, look towards, like, look around the room, and you kind of see, like, a, a similar uh, kind of look. You're not 100% sure. Like, you're kind of like, okay, now, like, the, anyone who rolled under an, an eight, um, basically, you're, like, you're still kind of, like, the adrenaline kind of uh, is still there. Like, you're still kicking in, like, I don't recognize this place. What the heck? Where the heck am I? You see people kind of just milling about around you, and you, as it like nonchalant, as if like what, what, like oh, wait, my, my, like what's going on? And you kind of, like you haven't really clocked in a few others, but a few of you, oh, those of you who rolled past an eight, um, you you start to kind of see others kind of like looking around, and you know, and you notice each other, um, and like yeah, this is this is you're like you're in a similar situation as as each other um and uh and and this is this is not this is not good um and um yeah and uh, so what like uh, what do you like uh, you know what actually i was gonna say i was gonna ask what do you do but we're gonna save that into our next episode uh so we stay tuned for part two of our adventure of dungeons and disables 